Hey guys, I want to do a vlog here, or blog, whatever you want to call it. I haven't done one in a while. Uh, I haven't really been putting up a lot of videos, guys. It's been, uh, things have been pretty slow here. Um, I think uh, Louisiana didn't get the memo that it's winter time because we're still in, in the low, or I'm sorry, high 70s, mid 80s. And, uh, So, uh, work is kind of, I have good days and I have bad days. I have a really good week this week. Uh, well, I mean, you know, not real good, but a good, com for, you know, compared to what I've been having. Uh, tomorrow, I got to move a Goodman condenser. I got called out on a service call late Friday afternoon that the unit wasn't cooling. Uh, it's sitting, It's a, what it is, it's a customer of mine's rental property. There's, <clears throat> it's two condos, one's downstairs, one's upstairs. The downstairs condo has a package unit. The upstairs condo has a split. Uh, the previous owner of the condos before my customer took over them had these Goodman systems put in brand new before he sold the condos to my customer who and my customer rents them out. Well, the, the guys that put in the Goodman equipment, uh, the split system for upstairs, which is what I was called out on Friday, it's sitting underneath a, underneath the staircase that leads up to the second floor condo. And then the the renters, they don't know any, I mean, you know, I, they don't know no better, so they wrapped this screen around the staircase. So the condenser could not suck any air. It was running on a look, right at 500 pounds of head pressure. It's a 410 system. So... Just by taking the visqueen off from around the staircase, we dropped the head pressure down to about 410. Uh, and that was on a mild 75, 76 degree day. So I called my customer, the owner of the place, told him what was going on. He said to do what I had to do. He didn't want to lose a unit. So I should be able to get some film on that tomorrow. And uh, hopefully I can get some good film on it. Uh, Tuesday, I have to change out a condenser, an evaporator. Uh, we're going to leave the furnace. The furnace is in good shape. And see, people are still calling me for no cools because Friday it was in the uh, it was 85 degrees here Friday, and here we are in what we're in our going on our second week in November. What's the yeah? Today's the eighth. We're going on our second week in November, and we're still in the 80s here. It's about 60 degrees right now. Uh, but um. That's because it's nighttime, but tomorrow it'll jump back up. But we're calling for high 70s, low 80s tomorrow. So we're still running air conditioning calls. Not not as many as we were because, you know, it is a little mild. You know, it is what it is. So, uh, and then Wednesday I have scheduled. I got a pull and clean, a train evaporator, and an air handler. I was called out last week. They said they had water dripping all over the floor. Units in uh, the air handlers in a closet, and uh, so uh, it was a lot of water dripping. I found a cracked 90, one of the 90s that was on the drain was cracked. So I redid the drain a little bit and then uh, looked up, and the coil is it's not completely blocked, but it's pretty dang dirty. So I told him we need to pull it out and clean it. And he wants to go ahead and get it done, and uh. So just a little update about what's going on. I mean, you know, I'm not abandoning you guys. I just haven't had any good material to bring you. Uh, I've had a few maintenances, but I'm really, I, I don't know if I'm going to film any more maintenances. I mean, I've, I've filmed several maintenances. Everybody has filmed maintenances. It's, you know, it's all the same crap. Uh, you know, check the capacitors because everything's mostly heat pumps over here. I do have the Testo 320 now. I have a few gas systems, but... Steve Lav and other guys have such good material on the 320. It, you know, it, it doesn't pay for me to do. I do have some really big news about myself that I want to share uh, with y'all. Uh, I, uh, you know, I've been obviously I'm overweight. You know, I've and I've been made fun of it here on YouTube, which it, you know, it doesn't bother me. When I was growing up, uh, I was a pretty slim guy. Uh, I, I would never call myself, I never called myself skinny except for up until I was about 10, I was real skinny. And then, you know, once I hit 11, 12 years old, you know, I started putting on a little bit of weight. 
But I stayed pretty slim for the most part because I was athletic. I played baseball and football. So I was always pretty slim, uh, but not skinny. But after I got out of high school and I quit playing football, quit playing baseball, you know, uh, I started packing on the pounds. And, uh, but I'm as, you know, pretty much as big as I've ever been right now. I have lost about 30 pounds in the last couple months. So I am, I'm not as big as I was right now, as I was like three, two, two, three months ago. But I'm still big enough to where it's unhealthy. Uh, my father had a heart attack in 2011 and had to have a quadruple bypass. My mother passed away unexpectedly two and a half years ago at 53 years of age. She passed away from a massive heart attack. Um, so it's, it, you know, it, it's, uh, it's genetic, you know, it, it, if I don't do something, it's going to happen to me one day. Uh, you know, I'm going on 30 years old and, uh, so it's, uh, it's time that I do something about it. So after the first of the year, I'm going to be having a bariatric weight loss surgery. Uh, it's something that I have, uh, fluttered with over the over the past few years um i'm gonna be giving up the smokes i know i'm smoking in this video and i usually don't do that on my videos but i didn't even notice it but one of the requirements for surgery is that i have to stop smoking uh, a month in advance before surgery so uh the surgery is going to take place late january early february because it's going to take me about four weeks to recover before the doctor fully releases me to lift and you know be able to do my job so I have to get it done before uh, spring before summer you know because once summer gets here and it's just gonna benefit me all the way around because everything over here is mostly in an attic I'm gonna be able to move in these attics a lot better my health is gonna be better I'm very fortunate to where I do not have diabetes um, but you know I am on the verge of that if I don't do something I don't have high blood pressure now, the only thing I do have is that my cholesterol is high. Um, so, But that will be cured after the surgery. Um, but I'm very fortunate to where I do not have any kind of heart disease right now. I don't have diabetes. I don't have high blood pressure. I don't have a lot of the issues that that most people my size have, and I'm, which is very fortunate for me. But the reason that I have not had the surgery yet is because in Louisiana, uh, health insurance in Louisiana does not cover the surgery. Um, there, there are no policies in the state of Louisiana that cover bariatric weight loss surgery. I think just about every other state in the United States cover uh i think every other state in america bes besides louisiana covers the bariatric weight loss surgery i think we are the only state or we're one of two or three if we're not the only state that doesn't cover it there's only like one or two more states that don't so but we're one of the ones that it doesn't matter what health insurance company i go with in louisiana bariatric weight loss surgery is not covered so I've had so I've had to save. I'm having to pay cash for this surgery. Uh, it's a fifteen thousand dollar surgery. Uh, the doctor fee is five grand, and the uh, hospital fee, which covers, uh, you know, the OR, the anesthesiologist, and one night stay in the hospital, because that's all that's required is a one night stay. Uh, is ten thousand. Ten thousand covers, you know, the the operating room, the anesthesiologist, and an overnight visit, you know, and all your medicines and blah 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 and all that. So, I've just about got the money saved up. I figure by the time I, uh, by the time late February, I'm sorry, late January, early February rolls around, I should have the money. At least that's the game plan. So uh, I just thought I'd let you guys in on that, know about that too. So there'll be a while uh, where I'm out of commission, 
on YouTube for that. Probably about four weeks, you won't see any material from me on YouTube. But maybe I'll do some video and uh, just keep you guys informed on how the surgery's going. And, uh, you know, maybe I'll video, uh, you know, just I'll get, I'll keep you guys up to date on, on, on my recovery on that. But, but anyway, uh, so I just thought I'd update you guys. But I'll try to film the condenser relocation tomorrow. It's not really a relocation. I'm just, the whip is actually long enough to where I, all I got to do is pop it down, cut the copper, and just move it over about five feet, get it out from under the stairs, and then just re do a little bit of repiping. And I should be able to get some film on the coil and connector change out Tuesday. So we'll see. But uh, all right, guys, thanks for watching.